So hello and welcome. So today I'm going to be doing a strip down on a Dyson V6. I'm going to be doing a tear down. Uh, I'm basically going to be tearing it down to the point where you can service all the parts, access the impeller uh, and the other bits and pieces. I'm not going to go down to where you take the motor, in, motor out of the casing. Um, but as you can see, as I pull the trigger on this one, this one's currently faulty. The blue light's on and it's just making a clicking noise. Uh, so the impeller isn't spinning at all. Battery's fine on this particular one. I've checked the voltage. So... Uh, yeah, and like any of these videos, make sure that you're competent uh, in working with small electronics and this type of thing. Although, I'm really only going to get it down to the point where you're servicing the actual main body, really, and checking the impeller for debris. So we'll get these bits out of the way, and then we'll make a start on uh, stripping down the body of the Dyson V6. So the first thing is to take the actual dust filter out, and then we need to get the uh, dust a container off this one's a bit uh, stiff so obviously never been off but there we go got it removed uh, and obviously we can clean these again in a minute but we'll we'll take these off the uh, main body and just give the main body a wipe down just so I don't get dust everywhere I am going to be cleaning them properly uh, when I take the blue cowling off later uh, but we now need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the battery now this battery is fine, there's nothing wrong with it. But I'll just hold it to the camera so you can see the screws. There's a screw on the front and a screw on the back of the handle. And this is purely to remove the battery. So I'll take the front small Phillips screw out. Uh, you'll notice if you give it a tug now, it won't go anywhere. There is a small screw on the back of the handle. Uh, just there, as I'm indicating. So I can't get it to show in the camera, but there is a small Phillips one just in the recess. Unscrew that one and that then releases the battery from the main body uh, obviously if you're replay, just replacing the battery there's a battery fault you can take the battery out like this and just put your new one in two new screws uh, two screws back in and away you go but inspector i think just make sure it is as expected make sure there's nothing in there no debris nothing broken uh, now i'm just going to get a flat screwdriver you might want to use a pry tool like a plastic pry tool at this point uh, but I'm going to use a flat screwdriver just in the end of the handle just to uh, lift off the cowling that's on the main body. This uh, holds the back filters uh, and protects the motor from any debris. So get your screwdriver just in the end there as I'm just showing. Just click it off. I'll just hold it to the camera. There's a small tab there uh, that you can see that's indicating which screwdriver. That small tab, uh, you just that's what you're trying to just pop off there with a flat screwdriver in the this back filter holder. And then either side there is... Well, there's clips all the way around, uh, but the trick is here, just get your screwdriver in the side of your pry tool and just give it a click, and it'll click off, and then the other side is exactly the same, but it just comes off once you free one. You can see all the muck in the back filters there. We, we will be washing them out and then putting them back into the uh, filter holder in a bit. Uh, so obviously, again, inspect everything, make sure everything is expected. It's got black fluff and dust in there, so I'm presuming that's what's gone wrong with this. Uh, it looks like there's some cotton or something like that that's got in, so... Give everything a good inspection. Unfortunately, the camera's just not focused in the right spot here at the moment, but I will uh, get it uh, closer up uh, in a second uh, so you can see uh, the clarity of the of the circuit board and stuff. But uh, the little red tab that you see, that controls the triggers the battery. Uh, so the, as you pull the trigger, the, the little grey uh, button on the side of the battery, it pushes it down and supplies voltage uh, to the motor as you pull the trigger. So if I just show you how the battery goes... Uh, there's a small little grey button on the side of the battery and you'll see when I push it the little blue light comes on and as soon as you push that button that supplies the voltage to the motor so when you put the battery into the body you'll see that that little red trigger actually pulls down onto the battery obviously this one is uh, currently not working but you should see the blue light flash as it pushes down on the button uh, and that's the it's telling you that the voltage is getting to the main body uh, and also the battery's got charge in it Okay, so like I said before, inspect everything, make sure and see if you can get an idea of what's gone wrong with it. If you can see any damage on the circuit board or see if you can see anything that's stuck. Uh, so here is where the actual Dyson V6 pulls the air through and you can see I'm pulling out with a pair of tweezers. Lots of like black uh, cotton, uh, cotton strands. Uh, and this is what looks like has happened to this. It looks like it's pulled in something through. The, it's got managed to get through the actual filters at the side and it's pulled it through the actual impeller uh, and got it right, uh, made a mess of the actual, um, made a mess and blocked it up basically. So clear everything up, like I said earlier, inspect everything, 
make sure it all is. I'm not going to be pulling the motor out of the body. I'm going to be leaving it in uh, the sort of that grey section. Uh, but I will be taking the cyclone off. Uh, so I think that should be the next thing that we do. So again, you use your flat screwdriver. There's two white tabs. Uh, if I just get my torch instead, of, I won't pick it off. In fact, just yet, I'll look at a torch. And what I'll do, I'll show you the, the two white tabs that you have to pop off to remove the cyclone from the actual body of the, the V6. So I'm just shine my torch in here because you won't be able to see it when I'm trying to unclick it. There's two uh, two white tabs, just stop the video there. There's two white tabs there that I'll just indicate them with make little arrows. And the trick is here, just to put your flat screwdriver in, they just pop off once you, you'll see as soon as you put your screwdriver against it. And that releases the uh, cyclone section from the actual main body uh, um, of the Dyson V6. So yeah, so let's get my screwdriver. Um, like I said, you won't be able to see this on the camera because I don't think I'll be able to hold it up while I just push it in because you have to put a bit of pressure on the clip. Uh, so I'll just do that. And once you pop one off, it leaves a, it's a circular, white circular clip inside. And once you get one, one release, the other will just pop off anyway. Um, and it's just like a small white plastic spring clip. Uh, and you can see it around the body of the motor there. Uh, and if we can just get the camera to focus, that's where the impeller, you should be able to see the impeller through where the uh, the vent is there where I'm just got my flat screwdriver. So there's all the same sort of black material still in there, black cotton. So I think we'll get some tweezers and pull this out. So if yours is jammed up like this one, the, you should be able to see the impeller and you should be able to spin the impeller. If it's not moving, then there's a reason for that. Either the motor's gone or there's something stuck in it. This one is quite obvious, as you can see. Um, looks like it's sucked in when it's been cleaning it's sucked in a great big lump of cotton and then you should be able to spin the impeller blades through the actual uh, where the spike like the, like the uh, plastic five plastic legs are there uh, the plastic legs are slightly damaged um, but it shouldn't hinder us really uh, you can see that that should be flush um, and it's just pulled them a bit as it's tried to pull the material through so just straighten them out they're not really loose um, and it is like only a thin plastic so I'm just reshaping it slightly it won't uh, do much uh, harm that as long as it's uh, not loose in any way so now now when I push the button I've now got um, the motor spinning which is great news so that tells me that that's the that's what the problem was that was the blockage uh, now I've got the battery and I'm pulling the trigger you can hear the actual fan spinning so we know that we have found the fault, which was pretty obvious with this one. Um, and now's the time, while well, I've got this, just to uh, give things a good clean. So in the back side of the filter cover, there is two filters in here. There's one that runs around the outer edge, which I'm just pulling out with a pair of tweezers here. And these are only bits of foam, really, nothing exciting. They're not HEPA filters or anything. And there's one that clips in as well down the center. And when you're putting these back in, you can't really go wrong because uh, they go in a certain way. Um, so pull them out because we're going to give them a wash in some cold water and then get them dried back out. I'm also going to just give the uh, back of the circuit board a bit of a clean off using this uh, WD-40 specialist spray. It's a contact spray, so don't use anything that's, uh, that shouldn't be on electrics. This is designed to be sprayed on electrics. Um, and obviously cleaning that's what it's for uh, i've used this on multiple different uh, devices and they always seem to go back to it uh, there's other things you can use to clean electronics and circuit boards down uh, but i just prefer to use this i've got a couple of cotton buds and i'm just giving things a good scrub over and clean making sure everything's uh, nice and clean really you don't necessarily have to do this bit it's just something i like to do if I'm, when i'm doing certain things so i usually have a toothbrush to hand give it a nice scrub around the only outer edges uh, I'm just using a magnifying glass just checking everything is is okay and there's nothing loose in there and all the circuit board looks okay but if you found the fault you don't necessarily like to have to do that you can see the impeller through the magnifier there um, I can just get zoomed in and you can see where it's just slightly broken on that uh, where them uh, five legs are the plastic legs so yeah get everything cleaned off like I said earlier toothbrush anything um, obviously be careful if you're using a stiff toothbrush around the electronics side but I'm just getting rid of all the dust and muck uh, that was that's embedded over the last couple of years and giving a good clean around the inside uh, making sure it's all just as nice and it's not never going to be like new but uh, clean the contacts off there there's two battery contacts that sit there well they're the ones that actually can uh, connect the um, the leg 
with the actual head of the actual vacuum and send the power down to the motor there uh, so i'm just giving them a clean check the filter if it needs a clean give it a wash under cold water this doesn't actually click on this particular model it just uh, pulls down with suction when you pull the trigger it pulls it down so just make sure all that's clear uh, make sure all the other bits are clean so now i've got everything cleaned down i can now well in fact no uh, what i'm going to do is just take this uh, blue cowling off here uh, so yeah this comes off where the indent is so put your flat screwdriver in you don't necessarily have to do this i'm going to take this off uh, purely so i can give it a wash under some cold water while it's got no uh, electronics around it so i might as well give this a clean while i'm at it so get your flat screwdriver in if you've got a pry tool you see i tried to put one in there but you can just pull the screwdriver around the outer edge and i'll show you the clips that they how they clip on in a second so just be careful because it is um a very thin uh, sort of plastic rubber material here so you can easily puncture it if you don't face your uh, pry tool in the right direction so just be careful when you're prizing it off and it should click off i'll just get these out of the way because if i get uh, any of the dust on the, these after i've cleaned them all but you can see all the muck that's uh, sitting in this sort of cyclone so like i said i think i'll take that off and we'll give that a clean uh, out of the way so i'll give that um, a bit of a scrub a bit of a blow down with some compressed air so now we have everything clean and i can now start to reassemble things from here so there's some catches that, that sit all the way around this blue uh, cyclone chamber and if i can just get the camera to zoom i'll just show you indicate one of the little legs uh, there if i just turn it to the side you should be able to see it a little bit better you see there's like a little tooth and that clicks in at the body that uh, the other this cowling bit um you can see the all the way around the edge has the little uh, clasps that click on and it can only go on one way as you see i was zoomed in there it can only go on one way because the actual uh where the the bit where you put the screwdriver in initially that section there the cutout that lines up so to put that back on you just line them back up and then they should click into each one of these all the way around the actual body so put this on get it lined up um, and then sometimes they click on with two hands like this and sometimes you have to just work your way around so we'll see if it behaves itself it's not gonna do once you get one on the old store just tend to go um so there we go it's starting to go and that's it we're clicked on so get it all seated down nicely make sure it's all as it was originally and then that is your cyclone chamber all nicely cleaned as well so we can move on to the next bit so this is the back uh, so the filter housing that covers the electronic side uh, there's two bits here these sit uh, like it can only sit in one way really it's got little recesses in uh, and there's two tabs of plastic that sit either side so there's one at the top and one at the bottom and i've not got the bottom one on that bottom tab just pull it back out you see it's just peeled over slightly looks like it's all right i thought it was uh, broken but it's not so and we'll put it back in make sure it's sat either side of that them tabs so that's the first filter in make sure it's in the tabs like i said and then you've got the one that goes around the outer edge and if you just get your flat-headed screwdriver uh, maybe i'll just zoom in so you can see it flat-headed screwdriver um or a pair of tweezers and just offer it in really because it's uh, it's all cut to length so you just push it in and the trick is here is to make sure it's seated squarely and flat to the back uh, face of the filter housing because uh, once uh, when you lift it up which i will do in a second you'll you can see through the vents at the side uh, and that is to stop anything entering the back of the dyson v6 um, once this is clicked back in position so i've give these a clean uh, in some cold water and i've dried them off overnight uh, and that's the way to do is keep rinsing it through cold water pretty much like i do with the dyson the, the standard filter which you can just see in the top right corner there so anyway yeah make sure it's seated all the way around nice and squarely and there you can see now through there you can see the filters through the vents all the way around that so that's the back filter housing assembled we can now click that back on put it into the actual motor body 
In fact, let's click the cyclone back on first, and that just clicks on. So we'll just line, make sure it's lined up, make sure nothing's going to foul. Click it in position, and that clicks on. And that's not going anywhere unless you release them two clips again. Now we can move on to the next bit and put the filter cover on the back. So everything's just in reverse really. Remember the two tabs at either side of this filter cover. You just offer these to the side of the I'll just zoom in on the body. I get to focus. There's two little clips there. It does go in the top as well where the two recesses there. There's some recesses that they drop in and two tabs. Uh, but you can push it on squarely or get one side to go and then the other will just click on. So just be nice and firm with it. And then it should just click into position. There we go. And then we've got the back. If you remember that tab that I showed you on the back bottom of this, that needs to click in. So um, there we go, that's clicked in. So that is the filter cover on the main body. So at this point now is the time to offer the battery back up and uh, to make sure that everything's working. So click that in position. Uh, you can spin it up. I'm not going to spin it up, but you click the battery in um, and, and obviously test it now before you put any screws in. Uh, so put your screw in the back body. Uh, and then let's get it tied up. But to, before you put any screws in, like I say, spin the motor up, make sure it's all working. Make sure you've got charge in the battery. Uh, and then we can start getting some screws in. So the one that sits on the back uh, filter cover housing Screw that one in, that will keep the battery and stop it from falling over. Check all your switches work, give it a little spin, there we go, all working. Don't forget you have another uh, screw that sits on the underside of the battery, so we will put that one in now. Again, Phillips screwdriver. So there's not a lot to these uh, Dysons really, they all click, they're pretty serviceable this, this particular model. Um, with only a couple of screws really holding everything else is just clips uh, holding tubular screws holding the battery and everything else is just clipped in so yeah get these two screws two phillips screws nipped up uh, and once you've got these tightened up make sure that you're happy with this seated otherwise the battery will rattle about or drop out when you're using it and we can now put the actual dust collector on i'm sure if you've had that off you can know how to click that on Put the filter in, make sure the filter sits in. Like I said earlier, the filter on this particular one doesn't click in, it just um, it just pulls in when you suction, when you pull on, like so. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please do, do subscribe to my channel. Please do hit the like button, hit me up any comments or questions below. Any other videos you'd like me to see on Dyson products or anything like this. I'm also starting to do tool uh, reviews, uh, so I'm possibly going to do some Makita stuff and stuff like that. Uh, but this video, obviously the Dyson teardown, Dyson V6 teardown, um, down to uh, serviceable parts. I hope it's helped you. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe, please like the video and hit me up with any comments below. And thanks again for watching Nose Nose on YouTube.